From Jackie Fuchs swagger to whatever Tiffany Johnson was up to, get ready to meet some of the most toxic chefs ever to grace Hell's Kitchen. And this contestant right here stirred up drama like nobody's business. Duck foot champion of the world! When Jackie made her first appearance in season 15, she walked in like she owned the place. With a swagger that'd make even the most conceited people blush, she sized up the competition and came to the conclusion nobody stood a chance against her. She was tough, she was beautiful, she was sexy, and well, she was ready to kick ass if it came down to it. And nope, that's not my analysis, but her own. I am the epitome of Jersey. Yeah, you should have realized something was fishy when I called her sexy. You should know by now that objectification is not my speed. Anyway, Jackie thought she was invincible, and she carried that attitude right from the beginning till the bitter end. I'm going to destroy everybody. Nobody's even gonna come close. You're all gonna cry to your mommies. She wasn't just gloating. She meant it. If you ask me, she really defined her personality in episode four, when her duck dish flopped in its eponymous challenge, earning her a mere five points. As punishment, the red team prepped ducks and dined on duck feet sandwiches. But guess what? Jackie wasn't phased by the meal. I mean, look at her go. Oh, God. But of course, her attitude got under Mises' skin. Jackie's a joke. She doesn't take this seriously at all. She is a shame face for this team. Well, yeah, maybe. Because the next thing she did was even more ridiculous. You probably know where I'm going with this, but check out what she renamed the menu. I'm gonna put the list. Jackie wrote the List. Surely the idea had to have stemmed from her last name. At least I hope so. But sous chef Christina didn't find it funny a single bit. Never again, I swear oh to God. God. Any, I shut up. Sit down. Just sit down. Although Jackie tried to defend herself, sous chef Christina wasn't here for it. She sent Jackie to the chef's table and laid into her, saying she'd have been fired if it were her kitchen, and called her the cancer of the team. Jackie brought her whole morale down. She has to go. No, I'm, I'm done with her. And believe me, that insult was far from unfounded. But Jackie refused to admit defeat to her superior. You would be fired if you if you work for me. You want to have it? Oh, you don't care? No, no. You don't care? No, no. The arrogance, I tell ya. Something must have gotten to her since her performance started dipping. In episode six, Jackie found herself singled out as the weakest link by Ashley. And this completely set her off. Amanda and Jackie show. Jackie decided to take the fight back to the dorms, too. I just don't like two-faced, fake-ass bitches with fake-ass You're fake. Dude, shut the up, dude. And nope, she didn't think twice about making some very, very serious threats. You know what I should be doing? Breaking your face right now. Well, if you've been lucky enough to avoid meeting a bully in your life, let me show you a perfect example. You know, you should have watched, like, how to cook videos before you came here. Oh, you upset? Go cry in your room, little girly. And, well, she had a unique way of venting her frustration. I beat this bitch, I beat that bitch, I beat that bitch. I tied your fluffy-headed ass. Yeah, violence just seemed to be her go-to thing. But at least Ashley was bold enough to stand up to her, unlike Ariel, who got caught in the crossfire during prep. I do it a cup. Where's the cup measure? I don't, I do it by eye a cup. You can't measure a cup with your eyes? Jackie was more into cooking by feel, while Ariel wanted to stick to the script. Who's ready don't to do it by eye? It's a recipe for a reason. You are aggravating me right now. Ariel, you may as well just let it be, because Jackie's antics are something only she can understand. So you need to make this for a blanc, bro. Here, you need to do this. I'm not doing it by eye. I follow recipes. Jackie had lost the only friend she had out of the entire cast, and that spelled trouble for her real quick. In episode 9, everyone seemed to have a bone to pick with her during deliberations. And how do you think she handled it? Them two, they up service and made us lose. They kill it in service every time. Yep, right on cue. 
And in the midst of all that nonsense, she ended up dropping a pretty huge bombshell that she'd only been cooking for three months. But that means you're not ready for BLT. I got oh, seven, yeah, I'm I ready got, for BLT. I got seven years on you and six months. To make things worse, she couldn't resist poking at Kristen. She was far more tenured, but Jackie tried to say that they were on the same level. But Kristen knew better. And this is when things started spiraling out of control. When Jackie tried to get a lighter from her later on, Kristen was fixing to smash her face. In. And boy, did that set her off. You touch my lighter, I will punch you in the face. Punch me in the give face. Give me my lighter, Jackie. Punch me in the face. Jackie, give me my And she didn't just stop there. Either light your cigarette or give me my lighter. Honestly, I'd rather not get involved at that point. But Kristen had it coming. Oh what are you going to get the out of my face? What are you going to out of But thankfully, better heads prevailed. Ramsey eventually had to step in and say, enough is enough. And you know it's bad when he normally lets the drama play out to help with ratings. So what did she have to say for herself? They feel like I'm not professional. And maybe they're just intimidating. I mean, maybe they thought I was going to kill them all. I don't know. There really is nobody like her, is there? And honestly, thank God for that. But I can think of someone similar. Now, Tiffany claims that she cared about food more than her family. Not sure if that's the flex she thought it was, considering she failed to show it on the show. Ladies won, men fit, men fit. Yes, sir. If you ask me, she was more into stirring the pot than actually stirring any pots in the kitchen, if you catch my drift. And Tiffany proved all that and more in the very first episode. I'm trying to prove that I'm not just some dumb ditzy blonde that looks really good. Yeah, we'll see about that. Because her signature dish looked anything but pretty. I have a lamb schnitzel with a rosemary and maple infused lamb gloss. But what was Tiffany's excuse for bringing up, in Ramsey's words, a bunch of wet diapers? I accidentally just kind of poured the sauce over it in a hurry. Great start, Tiff. But meanwhile, someone was taking notes about her attitude. I just don't understand what goes through some of these blonde bitches' heads. I don't get it. Yep, that's Kimmy. And she made a promise to herself to watch Tiffany's every move. Now, messing with Ramsey aside, let's see her take on some of her competitors. Like, take the scallop challenge, for example. Tiffany didn't hold back when she saw Barbie slacking off at the station. I don't understand why you can't cook the scallops. It's really not hard at all. And to make things worse, she didn't hesitate once to call her out, all the while dropping some pretty nasty slurs in the same breath. Eventually, the red team managed to seal the win, and Tiffany had absolutely zero empathy for what the men had in store. See ya! We're gonna have a great day, and you guys are gonna have a day. It wasn't even that hard of a challenge to win. Now, coming to the dinner service, Tiffany found herself on the garnish station. When she raised concerns about some missing scallops, Barbie brushed her off and sent up an incomplete order anyway. So Tiffany decided to play dirty, knowingly sending the flawed dish to the past to put Barbie in a pretty compromising position. Chef scallops right here. Here you go, Barbie. I'll just throw you under the bus because that's where you belong. In hindsight, everybody knows Tiffany's probably the most horrible contestant the show has ever seen. And her sly move here doesn't come as a shock anymore. She was just being herself. But getting back into it, Barbie overcooking her scallops only added fuel to the fire. Once again, Tiffany didn't hesitate to pin the blame on her. Just cook it right. Like, you just sank us. Desperate to salvage the situation, she suggested firing extra sea bass as insurance. But her plan backfired when Ramsey caught wind of it. After being thrown out of the kitchen, Tiffany got real pissed. Back at the dorm, she dropped a bunch of profanity and even trashed the place while she was at it. The two fish that I took out the f went out to the f way out the f table. You I mean, I wouldn't be able to stand being around someone like this, but the red team was helpless. The following day, Tiffany was rudely awakened by Barbie's noisy dishwashing and stomping around. And let's just say she didn't take it lying down. Literally. What are you doing? Really? I just washed the dishes. I, just I came out here with you going like this. She just would not stop talking. You're about to get choked out. Knock it off. Grow up. You're 33. I'm not about to get choked out. You're going to get choked out? I'm not choked out, you dumb. 
But Barbie kept a cool head somehow. Honestly, I want what she's having. Now, do you remember the time when Tiffany plainly stated she couldn't care less about pleasing the kids that came to Hell's Kitchen? I really hate cooking for children. Kids don't know what fine dining is. Their opinions really don't matter to me. Well, she meant it, because when she sent out her first attempt after like a year's wait, half of the pizza was completely burned. I'm talking like 100% carbon. When Ramsey got in her face about it, Tiffany was completely unfazed. I really don't like kids at all. You know, remember when she said she loves food more than her family? I'm starting to think she doesn't love her family very much. Anyway, that's none of my concern, but her rapport with Barbie definitely is. The two of them simply couldn't seem to get along. Yelling at me? I'm sick of the yelling! You want to talk? Talk! Do not ah! yell! And it happened again and again and again. Even sous chef Andy had enough of her at some point. You're the floppiest cook I've ever seen in my whole entire life. Sorry. No, you're not. You're such a Attitude. Yeah, I don't blame her. Tiffany had a knack for getting under everybody's skin. Now, her elimination was something the red team and everyone watching from home very much looked forward to. The drama was so bad that it was really starting to take the fun out of the show. But Tiffany, this is how she reacted. I never thought I'd be kicked out of this competition this early. Wait, did she say early? Well, I think you overstayed your welcome, my girl. You're late, if anything. But of course, it wasn't just the red team. The blue team had their own share of toxic contestants. Anton Testino's arrival in season 12 added more than his fair share of drama. In one of the episodes, Anton found himself in hot water back at the dorms. Rochelle reached out to see if he was alright, but Anton? Well, he was trying to be the hero he wasn't cut out to be. I'm pissed because I kind of let the team down. Why? Win. Yeah, none of them could figure out what he was talking about. But Anton was confident, so it must have made sense at least in his head. Just like this next bit. So part of me feels like I kind of let Ridge down in a way. You ain't everybody babysitter, man. I agree, it makes no sense. Meanwhile, Jason was losing his shit over the whole thing. But Anton kept trying to establish his position as the permanent leader of the blue team, even though everybody else had already moved on. And the way literally everybody but him was feeling made that real evident. That's fucking stupid. Could not agree more. But let's take him at his word for a second. Give the devil his due. For someone who took so much pride in being named leader, he wasn't showing it in episode 10. When Jason tried to get Anton's attention during the dinner service, Anton was laser focused on his cooking. Or at least he looked like he was. We have four minutes out. You heard that, right? How much time you need on that, Anton? Uh... If you're in charge, then maybe, I don't know, act like it. This is a kitchen. Think quick, act quick, cook quick. And that's all that matters in my mind at that particular moment. And Jason had literally no idea what was going on because of him. The problem with Anton is that uh, he's a stupid idiot. He doesn't communicate with any of us. He just thinks that everyone's going to follow him. But Anton couldn't care less. Despite the tension, orders continued to roll out from his station. And the men were stuck in a pretty tough balancing act. I don't give a fucking rat's ass. They say I'm crazy, but it's just that I move 10 times faster than them. Anton claimed to be moving 10 times faster than anyone else. And whether or not that's true, he definitely wasn't helping to keep the team synced up. And inevitably, things started to fall apart. How long, how long on those New Yorks now? I told you, six minutes. Seriously, guys, it's coming up, six minutes. An hour into the service, Ramsey was on the hunt for a New York strip, but Anton hadn't even started cooking a single one. And had the dumbest excuse possible lined up to explain himself. That's your joke. I know, I didn't hear you on the call, chef. And then the tension between him and Jason finally imploded. Stop! Yeah, commotion and confusion. Not exactly Ramsey's favorite C words. So, of course, they got kicked out of the kitchen. Wait, subtitle guy, I think that's supposed to be spelled with a K. There, that's better. But guess what? Anton was finding fault with everybody in the room, except for, you know, the guy actually responsible. It's a little hard for me to be a leader when I got the three stooges standing on the other side doing sh Anton's attitude was anything but acceptable. I mean, I can't pinpoint a single issue because the dude was so full of himself. You're a 
Chan time. Nothing! Yelling is not doing shit, dude. I'm pissed off. I want to argue. Finally, sous chef Andy took it upon herself to school Anton on, of all things, how to use an oven and keep track of time. Stop yelling minutes. at me. I've told them it's 14 minutes. What is this, Home Ec 101? But instead of taking the heat, Anton refused to let sous chef Andy take him to task because, wait for it, she was a woman. I'm gonna let some little girl get in my face, start ripping a new ass because you got issues on being a woman in the kitchen. And who, boy, did the sexism piss Andy the hell off. Don't you talk back to me! Don't you ever talk back to me! Back to yes, you are! I mean, she's in charge for a reason. Anton's elimination was probably just as anticipated as Tiffany's, but when it came calling, he was barely able to process why it happened in the first place. Maybe next time it'll be his restaurant next door to mine. I didn't walk away with the crown, but I was the best out of everybody in there. Ahem. Delusional. Adjective characterized by or holding false beliefs or judgments about external reality that are held despite incontrovertible evidence to the contrary. And also Chef Anton Testino. What? Don't look at me, that's what it says in my dictionary. But I'm far from finished with the blue team. I'm very confident in my abilities. I bring the technical aspect, and I don't want to sound overconfident, but I have a great chance to win. Russell knew how to cook. I guess that's why it was his last name. But it wasn't luck he walked away as the runner-up that season. But his attitude left so much to be desired. Like, take how he handled himself during punishments. Don't talk about the kitchen, because you guys don't know shit about the kitchen. And he just wouldn't shut up about it. Wait, watch your language. Watch my language? I'm a grown-ass man. At one point, he even went full-on micromanager mode, poking his nose into everybody's business. It's gonna be no more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm gonna shove my foot up somebody's ass tonight. And if you can believe it, eventually, that's exactly what he did. I think we should all worry about our stations, and then we can start branching out. Dude, you're trying to be the boss here. You're trying to play Big Willie, but it's not constructive. Boris wasn't super into Russell's leadership style, and neither was I. But then came the big day, Hell's Kitchen's 100th dinner service, where Russell was at the garnish station, at least in theory. The only time he made an appearance was to sling some not-so-nice words at Boris. Get it working first, then, before the oysters, because the oysters don't take as long. However, Boris decided to ignore him and keep his head down. But we all know how Russell rolls by this point. Don't fuck. I think it's ridiculous how slow the apps were taking. And he was so obsessed with Boris that he left Rob high and dry. He was not communicating with me. And what's helping me here? I mean, you could tell how intentionally he was ignoring him. But for what? Weren't you trying to run the brigade, like, moments earlier? Where'd that go? You can't walk five steps up to the pass and see what you have on order. My mouth is closed. Talk to me, Russell. Immature doesn't even do it justice. After a streak of losses in both challenges and services, Russell and his team found themselves sifting through trash and prepping both kitchens for what was coming next. But we all know how much Russell loves his punishments. I was thinking about tossing Rob out with the trash, but I can't pick him up. So I said my piece and want him to just own up and, and take some responsibility. And when the lunchtime rolled around with those infamous cheese sandwiches, he drew a line in the sand. Dude didn't even want to touch them. But did he manage to cool off overnight? Absolutely not. He was back to being his same old horrible self in the very next challenge. I need another towel for a second. Somebody give me one. You need towels? I need towels. I don't have one. Well, one thing was for sure. Rob probably hates him more than I do. He noticed how Russell would be up and about when Ramsey was in the kitchen, and how he completely shut down as soon as he left. He shuts down, he shuts up, he doesn't help anybody, and he does his thing. Anyway, when the time finally came for him to face the music, Russell wasn't exactly in the mood for explanations. He brushed off Trev's attempts to clear the air while he was at it, too. Just got dirty. Time into the train tracks. I came out alive, and you are in so much fing trouble, bro. In the next service, Russell yet again tried to throw in his two cents. But Trev and Vinny weren't having any of it. Still has not started the lobster. Stop! Final turn! Let's go! And now it's up to Vinny and Jillian to complete cooking and plate all three dishes. In fact, he was convinced he could outcook them both in his sleep. See, Russell has more problems with his attitude than I can count. 
Browns. And although he was so close to winning the whole season, nobody was happy seeing him go as far as he did. Okay. Now, it's time for another peculiar contestant who cooked up a storm during his signature dish challenge, but guess what? It was just the start of the insanity he'd bring to the table. The bird, chef. The pigeon. The pigeon. The one that everybody would be scared to cook with. You see, Matt Hearns started off by making as horrible an impression as he possibly could. You absolutely word bolognese. Well, I think he was being polite there. Meanwhile, the contestants couldn't stop poking fun at him. You know what? I could go for some dub breast too. <laughs> I could go for a uh, pigeon Big Mac. To make things worse, during the dinner service, he messed up the scallops. So it was time for round two with Ramsey. Don't give me a scallop unless it's cooked perfectly. Do you get it? Also, let's not forget that he had the audacity to ask Ramsey to check the cameras to back up his story. Like, zero words, you guys. Zero words. And boy, did things get spicy later on when they went back to the dorms. I don't care if they're mad. They can be mad. Take your tampon out. He managed to dodge the bullet that night somehow, but it only caused his arrogance to grow tenfold. Damn, man! Right! Hey, why are you all pissed off right now? Sometime later, he proved to the world that he had absolutely no respect for the judges. It's irritated me. Not only is it irritating, it's embarrassing. And, of course, he wasn't the most graceful loser in town. I don't want to sit here and listen to these guys degrading me and talking Oh my god. It's just really starting to irk me. When that was about to call it quits and leave, Ramsey decided to have a one-on-one -on -one to talk him out of it. But, of course, Matt was a man of his word. Do you know why it's for you? Because you don't care. Okay, so, this guy came into the competition, bombed a bunch of dishes, and was just a massive distraction to his whole team and Ramsey to boot. Then, all of a sudden, he was gone. Have I got that right? Well, either way, he seemed pretty upset for a guy that was literally trying to quit 15 seconds ago. And he came up to me with that same up, point blank. Somehow, I'm not surprised. So, who do you think was the most toxic contestant on the show? Let me know down in the comments, but maybe bring a hazmat suit so you don't get sick. Or you could also drop by my social media pages if you're scared of what might be lurking down below this video. Wouldn't blame you. That being said, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Pushing the funny YouTube buttons really does make a difference. And if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see the next one right here. It's even crazier.